What's up guys? So you guys have been asking for Kia Stinger content and I have put some more Kia Stinger content together. So let me explain a little bit of what, what we got going on here. So um, at the start of this year, we decided to put together something pretty rowdy. Um, it was a stock turbo engine that I wanted to see how far we could push. And well, uh, let's just get to the, the, I guess the bones of it. We had to cut up an engine because we toasted an engine. Um, the interesting thing is, is we didn't destroy a piston. We didn't ruin any of the cylinder heads. We did lift the, the heads, uh, which we all know is a common problem, but I got some really interesting stuff here I want to share with you on the engine itself. So let's dive into that. Um, what I'm going to show you here first is what we ended up doing with a connecting rod and a piston. So connecting rods are not supposed to be, you know, semi, you know, wavy. So you kind of get the idea there. The piston still rocks on the pin, which I was pleasantly surprised with but again the rod itself I'm not sure if I'm doing any justice with my dirty sweatshirt here but is bent okay uh, it did damage the crank a little bit in the bearing so we are going to investigate uh, a bearing upgrade uh, it did mark obviously the side of the skirt up a little bit uh, side of the skirt got marked up because well the piston was sitting inside of the bore crooked Okay, but it still rocked back and forth. But here's the interesting part. Let's take a top peek at the top. Okay. There's no signs of detonation. Uh, we were running race gas when we were doing this particular build, trying to uh, extract as much power as we can out of the stock turbos. So with that being said, We've had pistons available for about a year, two years now. Uh, they're 1400 horsepower pistons made by Ross. Uh, we have a custom GDI dome on our pistons. Uh, I think those are on the website, maybe not. They're probably not. Um, so I'll have to get those up on the website with the next batch that we got in. Uh, we've sold several sets to big turbo people um, and they've asked me to keep their names uh, quiet. So if you see a big turbo build and has a built engine, there's a pretty good possibility that has our pistons in it. Uh, rods yeah I got a set uh, we got a prototype set coming from Crower so we're gonna see what we can do with the Crower rods um, if that doesn't end up working and we have some clearance issues inside the block with the Crower rods we will be moving over to um, Carrillo and Carrillo said that they'll get a set of uh, rods built made for us so with that being said uh, I don't have uh, when we get started on the new build, I will have some more pictures there for the new build showing the rods and pistons. Okay, so there's that. Let's move over to this. So, I had some concerns about the block. Um, without too much being said, my biggest concern and the reason I cut the block up is I wanted to see what I had for cylinder liner thickness. So I'm just going to kind of rock this back and forth. This is the edge you're looking at right here. This is all the aluminum. And then that small offset goldish color. And like I said, I'm going to try to move this around a little bit. That's your cylinder liner. Now if you want to take a real close look at that, it doesn't go all the way to the top of the bore. And for obvious reasons, the top of the bore really doesn't need to have the cylinder liner sticking out of the top of it. It would be beneficial if it did, but again, it would not be needed because there's not much going on on the top. If it did go all the way out the top, it would aid in uh, cylinder head gasket seal. Um, and then the, the new block that we have will, will obviously be sleeved. Okay, but so you can see how thin that actual liner is. Now, of course, the liner is backed by all this aluminum, which does reinforce the liner itself. Again, trying to rotate this around so you can see the liner. And again, the liner does not go all the way inside. You can see a little bit better. 
out of the top but it does go all the way bottom to the bore okay so uh i think when we measured the liner the liner is like eighty thousand thick we uh we're surprised with that so the pistons that we are going to be offering for the stock locks um will be like a half thou over so it'll just simply be a hone we won't be boring the blocks in order to get that additional uh Get the, sorry, get the piston to fit inside there. We're afraid that boring the block, like if you were to go with the standard uh, 30 over piston, sorry I'm using uh, uh, fractional sizes, uh, not metric. Um, the overbore, we're afraid it would take too much of that liner away because the liners again are only about 80 thou. Let's say if you go 30 thou overbore, that's gonna be 15 per side. You're gonna be chopping that down to like, 70 your liner your liners when they start to get below 80 uh they do have a tendency of not holding as much power as they should and that's going to move on to our next step uh, we definitely don't want to put a 1400 horsepower piston in an 800 horsepower block so we're going to end up keeping the blocks as robust as we can with the factory liners and not running extremely oversized pistons but so here's my next area of concern and we ran into this and i'm gonna tip the camera down here a little bit try to see if i can get the block in the picture there we go sorry about the shakes okay uh open deck versus closed deck okay a lot i'm sorry if you already know what this means so the block itself is an open deck design, okay? So that means that the tops of the bores are surrounded by a gap all the way around. So I mean, what if I slap this back up in here really quick, you can see how it's open deck design, okay? Uh, cylinder support systems makes a closed deck version, and I have one of these blocks, I have a prototype block, where they went through and closed the, the deck of the block. So it's uh, more or less they CNC the top of the block out. They press in a plate that has holes drilled in it for uh, relief uh, to allow additional, uh, sorry, to add additional support to the tops of cylinders. Now, why do you want additional support on the tops of cylinders? Really good question. Okay, so bore here. When we brushed this out really quick to get it clean, we shoved a bore mic down inside the, these two cylinders just to check them. When we got the bore mic down in there and we were coming up, our pin access here and here on these two sides here was good. We had no, no dissimilar changes when we went to the top and came up to the, uh, went from, sorry, went from the bottom and came up to the top. Uh, moving up and down in this fashion, checking that, you don't normally see growth in these cylinders when on the pin axis, but I just wanted to double check. So when we moved the two thrust axes, which is our here and here, we got uh, a piece of paper. Okay, so on this cylinder, there was almost 15,000, it was in between 14 and 15 thousandths worth of additional growth from the bottom of the board to the top of the board. And the boards are shaped kind of like an egg. They're kind of oblong. Okay, this one was only about six thousandths. Now, we suspect that this one didn't have nearly as much growth as the center one because this is surrounded by a lot more metal on the end of the block. Uh, front and rear cylinders normally don't experience as much growth as center cylinders because center cylinders do not have any additional support. Uh, heat, heat absorbing stuff, material, et cetera, et cetera, because you got a lot more aluminum over here to dissipate the heat, et cetera, et cetera. This bore, was shaped like almost like an egg. Now we saw this in the 1.6 on our Veloster platform. And that's why I checked it on the 3.3 is once you get the open deck 1.6 liter, uh, once it starts getting bigger than, oh sorry, once you start adding more than about 400, 450 horse to it, we start to see the blocks push apart in the top and we were starting to lose ring seal, getting some oil burning, stuff of that nature was happening on the 1.6 in the 1.6 turbo engine in a very popular uh the the blaster launcher sport uh the kia soul turbo uh the uh, the forte turbo etc etc um the bores pushing apart 
will cause a loss of ring seal. Well, in our case, we had an extremely high RPMs, uh, pushing 8,000, 8,500 RPM. What you ended up with is once those rings reach that point where it's starting to push apart, you'll start to get ring flutter when the rings go back in because the rings come apart in the bore and as they go, as the piston goes back down, they have to close back up. Lots of blow bly, uh, loss of ring control, a bunch of stuff starts to happen. So we sleeve, uh, we put uh, sleeves inside of the 1.6 engine we also can do the closed deck design. Again, I will show you that when we uh, get the new block build to start. I mean, I gotta keep you, you know, interested in watching additional videos. So the uh, cylinder support system will come through, seal up the block. We already have one stinger block done like that, but in the VTs, we just put sleeves inside them and the sleeves have a support system around them so you machine this out, you machine the top down, you press a new sleeve and then the sleeve sits on the perimeter of the open deck design on the interior of the wall. So, are we gonna end up sleeving a 3-3 block? Yes, we are. Um, I'm eventually gonna get there. I do wanna try a couple of other things first and I'm gonna talk to you about block fill now in relationship to uh, holding more power and keeping more of the cooling benefits at the top of the Bore. Okay, so we well, do want to show you this. Let's see if I can get that in there. Okay, you see how this has a very small taper to it, and it possibly gets a little bit thicker here than up top. So this tapered area here. So what we can do is you can go through. It's called. It's kind of like a concrete stuff, where you go through in the open deck design. You tip the cylinder head up on its side, you block the water port passages uh, in the front, and then you can go through and fill with, it's called block fill. Um, you can fill the block up on the interior of the block up to, uh, some cases it can go as, you know, just an inch from the top. Um, other cases you only want to go about halfway up. We're going to do some experimenting with, uh, the second block we're building, where we're going to go through and we're going to fill the cylinders up a little bit with a block fill to add more rigidity to the block and hopefully more rigidity to the liners themselves. Again, the block we're using does have the cylinder support system where it has the block guard machined in to support the tops of the cylinders. One of the other things too is when you're doing the cylinder support system, I should have probably have mentioned this, is that the cylinder support system puts the load of the cylinder itself, the, ex the open deck interior piece here, and it puts the load up against the outside of the block also. Again, it's a piece that you press in all the way around. And so when you start generating really high cylinder pressures, this can no longer push apart. So you're not gonna, it's gonna keep it from egg shaping. The other thing that's very interesting is you want to do the cylinder support system and then you want to finish home the bores. We've seen on a couple of occasions uh, with other applications where we put the cylinder support system in and it actually pinches the top of the bore a tiny bit. Um, you want to make sure that you hone the block after you do the cylinder support system. Okay, I think I got everything covered. We've got rods and pistons Ta -da. coming. We have a cylinder support system block where we've had the open deck uh, filled with a closed deck design. That should allow the block to generate, hold a considerably more power without any problems. And our pistons, we only went over, I want to say they're like four or five thousandths over. So essentially you just do a hone in the cylinders, no boring. You just do an aggressive hone inside the cylinders to fit the new 1400 horsepower forged pistons. So I think that's about, about covers it. Um, hopefully the next video that we have of the stinger will be of the block going together. We've got uh, some ported cylinder heads that we're working on. We're gonna be putting on the block. Will we eventually have a big turbo kit? Yes, we'll have a big turbo kit uh, considering the, putting the development into the belt engine with the ported heads. However, I am gonna be coming back and chasing down a bunch of stock turbo records to prove 
that we can do this also with the stock turbo setup. Uh, this was on stock turbo. I, I didn't mention that. We bent this rod on a stock turbo with leaded race fuel. Again, no detonation indications in the tops of pistons. So this is just, uh, I want to tell you how much torque it was making, uh, but at the same time, I, I don't want to tell you how much torque it was making. Uh, let's say this, it was more than 600, less than seven. So uh, I'm not happy with the dyno chart because the dyno charts weren't uh, producing the results that we wanted for horsepower. Uh, and we were just stuck with an absolute mountain of torque. Um, I did eventually get that sorted, but this is what happened once I got it sorted. All right, with that being said, you guys have more Stinger content. You're more informed on the engine. I will be cutting up a cylinder head also. Um, I, we are doing some port work on a cylinder head, but I wanna see how far I can go with the port work. So there'll be another video with the port work. Hopefully uh, that video will be tied in with the new engine that we're putting together. All right guys, so you're updated. I'll try to get more Stinger content out for you guys. Um, I appreciate you guys watching the video, learning something about your 3.3 engine. Uh, it's super important that we keep videos uh, with information like this coming out for everybody so everybody knows what they're working with. All right, guys. Thank you for watching.